when boarding schools were forced upon our children and our families, an unhealthy way of life began. These systems were militarized institutions that tore our children away from their families, their identities, and their languages. Boarding schools really enabled cultural genocide. The remains of more than 200 unmarked graves at former boarding schools. A crime against humanity. It took our own Native nations to restore that healthy way of learning again that boarding schools wanted to destroy. Family is, is literally the heart of everything that we are. <laughs> the bond between my mom and Andrew, like the three of us, it's like magical. We grew up always knowing the history of indigenous people overall, but we never really felt that we were part of a tribe, mm -hmm. you know, um, ceremony. We knew nothing of that. Thank you everyone for uh, being here. It's just another good day to celebrate life. Uh, we all accompany each other in a good way, and we all leave here, um, returning home safely, wherever that may be. Oh, we'll be back. I'm Petu Lachchina Dawachyanka, the Andrew Hollowhorn, the Mieyelo. My name is Andrew Hollowhorn. My Lakota name is Hahepi Kichimani, and I'm 17 years old, a senior at Naka. The same year that I lost my grandfather, that was one of the earliest memories I have of questioning a book. He was wondering why he wasn't learning about tribes in school. Mm -hmm. You know, just the basic rudimentary stuff about what kind of tribes are in the Northeast or the Southeast or, you know. He wanted to learn more about tribes, but they weren't teaching it at his, at his school, so. This is our, our hollow horn. This is actually where we get our name, hollow horn of a buffalo. We have our sage in there and our tobacco. This is my mother and her mother and her mother. This has got to be, oh, I don't know, 1870, this picture here. So my mother was, I always called her the feisty one. I mean, she was in high school in, what, 1927. She threw out her history book because she said it was garbage and it didn't read the truth. It was, and this is a public school in Montana. It was not an Indian school. I remember my grandfather and mother talking about Indian rights. The, the sovereignty that we deserve and that we had within ourselves. My father is very proud of being Lakota. He came from a family of alcoholics. He didn't speak the language too much because he wasn't taught the language. There was no traditionalism, there was no ceremonies. So I think you have those dynamics of alcoholism, Christianity, and they just create chaos. Chaos. <laughs> I just want, you know, positive thoughts when I start the beadwork. And it's like my way of saying good morning to my dad. I have a friend up in Pine Ridge, same age as me, and she said, when they took our buffalo away, they took away the purpose of the man in our tribe, the men in our tribe. So it was up to the women to continue. It was a systematic effort by the federal government to destroy us. When Andrew was in fourth grade, my husband then killed himself um, with alcohol. And it, at that time, a year later, we were still trying to come together mm -hmm. as a family and figure it all out. Just you know, walk this way. So all we had was grief okay. and anger and anger. <laughs> and resentment and all the bad yeah. things. My father died a year-ish before Andrew was ready for middle school. I wanted to protect him and make sure he had the best opportunities for him. Mm -hmm. I didn't want him to be another lost indigenous man.
Culture is inseparable from academic success in many ways. NACA was born so that we could re-engage young people into learning that was meaningful. We teach our children indigenous knowledge, indigenous language, indigenous values, and they really truly thrive. You were here sixth grade, you were here sixth grade, right? Someone who loves you chose for you to be here. And literally on our, on our logo it says growing together. That's Naka. Do you want me to do your hair? I was gonna get used to not doing your hair for being in college. In the, um, the late spring of Andrew's fifth grade year, we went to Naka's open house and they offer Lakota language, which to me is amazing to offer it so far from home. <laughs> Yeah. Right away we started to see a bigger light because he was already full of light. Yeah. <laughs> Us little Indian kids are learning about mm -hmm. our own people. It, it just had infinite possibilities and I was like, if both the X and the Y... Can... He really felt like he fit in because he saw other boys with long hair and that meant a huge deal to him. It was so cute. Um, yeah, and teachers with long hair. Huh? Yeah, and teachers with long hair. My name is Grandma Hollowhorn. It's a Lakota name. I always tell people Naka is my family now. Those people down there that we've known for you know, six, going on six years. <laughs> Andrew's connection with Naka, it just filled a void that we had for so many years. Mm -hmm. And it feels really good to be part of a community, to yeah. be part of a tribe. <laughs> because, because I think that's that's how we are successful as, as Native people, that we know that there's a tribe behind us. This time at Naka has been very constructive for me. It's been a long, bumpy road, but it's only because it was just another step towards uh, healing. We are Lakota, and for me, that means we adapt to new hardships, but we always get through it. My granddaughter, Julia, is just started at Naka. She's a sixth grader. You know, it's gonna be a major change is that nobody's gonna question your last name. <laughs> They're gonna know your last name already. She's gonna go to a school where her name's gonna be accepted. Not just her name, but who she is and where she comes from. Sir, Julia, what did she share next? Here's a Hollowhorn. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's cool because my last name is Hollowhorn. Every time one of our kids learns our ancestral languages, those who have come before us, they're just, they're so happy. They're smiling. They're smiling now. And I know my dad heard that. I always call that time I knock my building ears because it made the structure of me. I feel ready to go to a place on my own and to, to see the world. <laughs> when you learn who you are, it, it makes you ready for anything. Naka helped us heal those historical traumas by acknowledging it, by talking about it. We will face the storm, and that's, that's what's made us strong people. We're here, and hopefully we can make that path for our, our future children.